Hello and welcome to this PS Trace tutorial video. Today I would like to talk about the different parameters that you need to set if you want to record an electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. EIS is a very popular technique these days, so I think most of you will have to face the challenge to record an impedance spectra eventually. Let's just have a look how it's done in PS Trace. In PS Trace, you choose from the list of techniques impedance spectroscopy and then you get this mask with all the parameters that you need to set for your impedance spectroscopy. To explain these uh, parameters a bit more in detail I have prepared a small uh, a few slides. The current ranges at the top work like for any other measurement technique that we have. So basically the current ranges are like scales of, of a map. So let's say for example we have this scale on the left side where, we, where, this, well, where this distance is 50 meters and you can nicely see that the Ponsens headquarter is in this building and it's not in this building for example. But we cannot see any neighboring city. So if you wanted to know where is Utrecht you would have to zoom out the scale bar gets bigger. Now this distance is five kilometers and we can see that there are also other cities around us. However, we cannot see in which street the Ponsens headquarter is anymore. We still can see it's in Houghton, but not in which street exactly. Well, and this is how your current ranges work. If you put a too high current range, your resolution for low currents will get worse. And if you put a too low current range, you will cut off higher currents because you cannot measure them anymore. Another point, this is for your current ranges and then the next point is your equilibration time. Again this has two purposes basically. One of them is that you apply already your starting potential and in case that starting potential is different than the OCP of the electrode you give the system some time for faradic, uh, for a capacitive charging current to decay but also it gives the potentiostat some time to choose the right current range. Well the next option allows you to choose the type of scan you want to perform. Most of the time, well so th this is not the frequency scan, we will get to that later, but here it allows you to scan the EDC or you can scan the time uh, or none of the above. This is what I've chosen here, this is fixed. Uh, most of the time when people choose here a scan option they also want to fix the frequency and then follow the impedance over time for example or want to see the change of impedance if they change the EDC. We can have a look later in PS Trace again like how does the menu change when you change this option. But this is like usually the scan type fixed is the classic way of doing impedance spectroscopy. The next two options are the EAC and EDC and they basically define where your sine wave is and how it looks like. So during an impedance measurement you apply an EDC, so a constant potential, and you superimpose on that an EAC, so a sine wave shaped potential. And the e EDC basically tells you how far away is that sine wave from your zero point. That is usually, if you don't make special settings, the reference electrode. So how different is your potential from the reference electrode's potential? And then the EAC is lets basically the potential oscillate around the EDC. And the higher the EAC, the higher is the amplitude of your sine wave potential. I get to the EDC back when I talk about measuring versus OCP. Now I would like to turn about the frequency type. That's actually a very simple option. Option. You can either record a spectrum and then you would have frequency type scan or you can decide only to record at a single frequency. Maybe as I said you just want to see how a corroding species is changing its impedance over time with a fixed single frequency. Then you have the number of frequencies that you want to set. So you can either set in the left field you can set how many points you want to have in D uh, total or you can set on the right one how many points you want to have per decade. And decade here means in distances that increase by, um, by, ten, by, by multiplies of 10. So one decade will be from 1 to 10, then from 10 to 100, then from 100 to 1000. And because usually impedance spectroscopy the results are plotted on the logarithmic scales, 
the frequencies that are chosen for you are equidistant on a logarithmic scale. If you want to know which values are used and maybe even change them, you can use the edit button to make it an individual list of frequencies. You can even load lists of frequencies in there. Then you can set the boundaries for your impedance spectrum. You can say which one is the starting frequency, which is usually the high frequency, and where it ends, which is the low frequency. Because impedance spectra are, um, are recorded, well, traditionally in a dispersive way, meaning you record a frequency. When you have your values, you switch to the next frequency, record the values, then you switch to the next frequency, record the values. This is called dispersive. And that means that high frequencies will very quickly give you a measurement point, where low frequencies will take a long time to give you a measurement point. So traditionally we start at high frequencies because we get a lot of values quickly, easily, and we end at low frequencies because there might be the possibility in stopping your measurement earlier and you don't have to wait 20 minutes till the last frequency is recorded. Then the last option that we have in the standard is the measure versus OCP. And that makes the difference if you want to measure if the potentials you put into the software are usually versus the reference electrode. So if you apply an EDC of zero, that means zero versus the reference electrode. If you now choose the option measure versus OCP and EDC versus OCP, that means if you set a zero in the EDC window, that your measurement will be performed at the OCP, so at the open circuit potential. The open circuit potential will be measured right before the measurement and it will be assumed that that doesn't change throughout the measurement. You can set here in these windows how long you want to measure the OCP before you start your measurement or which stability criterion needs to be met before the measurement will start. So these are the standard parameters and I want to tell you first before I go to the advanced parameters why it is important if you measure versus OCP or RE. Many people um, put a zero uh, volts in the EDC because they don't want to apply an EDC and think this will work for impedance spectroscopy. Maybe because they have an electronics background where the circuits themselves don't have a potential. But this is not how it works in electrochemistry. We know that our systems do have a potential that is, well, created chemically. Usually you want to perform your impedance measurement at a place where you get a very sensitive signal. And if we now look at the four graphs, each of them showing current plotted versus the potential according to the Nernst equation. So this would be the Nernst, well th these curves follow the Nernst equation if there would be no diffusion limitation. So this is how a measurement would look like if diffusion would be not be important. We have no depletion in front of the electrode. And now we're performing our um, impedance measurement. That means we're applying an EDC and that determines where on this axis we are. And then an EAC that determines how wide a window is for a sine wave. And usually we want small amplitudes to have a non-destructive technique and to be on an approximately linear relationship between current and potential. So a great place to perform your impedance spectroscopy is this very steep place of the curve. Because if you apply here a small sine wave potential, you get a rather high current wave back and that you can nicely read out. Now, what does that have to do with versus OCP and versus RE? Well, this steep place is usually the OCP of your active species if your active species has a ratio of one to one of oxidized and reduced species. So if we have this situation and we uh, apply zero versus OCP, we get here a nice signal. If you would do the same thing with zero versus RE, and now I've just arbitrarily chosen here an RE, but you see here now we're at a very different place. Plus, we have pulled away the working electrode from its OCP to the RE's potential. So we also have in the background a reaction running now. And um, by the way, if your solution has a very different ratio, then for example, if you measure versus OCP, you would now suddenly be at a very different place where you also might get a back signal. And for the reference electrode, well, 
if you apply zero volts versus a reference electrode and you do have a proper reference electrode, not a pseudo reference electrode, then of course the potential of the reference electrode will not be influenced by the concentrations in solution. I just wanted to put this out there because this is a rather common mistake that people apply zero volts versus their reference electrode, pulling the working electrode from its OCP to the reference electrode's potential. So just quickly let's have a look at the advanced parameters in Pierce Trace. The ones that are here are a special filter that you can activate if you see jumps when you have a current range switch between the 100 microampere and the 10 microampere current range. So usually you don't need that. But you can also set the minimum sampling times at very high frequencies. You get very quickly a lot of sine waves and a measurement point is very quickly done. If you have the feeling you have a very noisy environment and you need more waves, you can tell the software for each point at least you need to sample this amount of time. The maximum equilibration time does kind of the opposite. At very low frequencies, measurements take very long and usually we wait at least a full sine wave till we start actually recording values so that the system has time to well equilibrate. But at very low frequencies this can take very long and maybe you want to cut this short to a defined amount of time. And the last advanced options are the trigger options. So you can use the auxiliary port. So let's say at the start of a measurement we can also set the digital lines to certain values and you could connect your auxiliary port maybe to some kind of photodiode or spectrometer or light source. So in some way when the measurement is started a photo electrochemical setup is, is triggered and now you have a correlation between your impedance measurement and the start of another external device like in this case your photodiode. Um, now, I think I thoroughly covered like all the important parameters for impedance spectroscopy to get you started. If you find this video helpful, there are more videos on our YouTube channel. And if you don't want to miss new ones, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you don't want to miss any PondSense news, follow us on LinkedIn because we post regularly updates there. So thanks for watching and have a great day.